Legend of Total War here, and today we're going to be doing another Top 5 Total War video. I'll be covering the Top 5 Worst DLC in a Total War game today, and as was the case with all the other videos, I fully expect that many people are going to disagree with the choices that I've made for this list, and that's absolutely fine. If you disagree with any of the choices, feel free to post a comment down below and explain why you think I'm wrong and you're right. Who knows, you might just convince me. In addition to that, if you want to influence the next video and have your suggestion be the next top 5 Total War video, post that comment and if it's the most upvoted comment, then I'll do it. Anyway, let's move on now to the number 5 slot for the worst DLC in a Total War game. In my opinion, the number 5 slot has to go to Total War Warhammer's Chaos Warriors DLC. So this campaign, in terms of its roster, this faction, is really only half done. For anyone that knows what's really involved with Chaos, a lot of their roster is missing. Now, its campaign mechanics, on top of that, are probably one of the most boring in Warhammer 1 or 2. It's not very well done. Now, another reason why it's in the top 5 list is because it's Day 1 DLC, which is bad practice, bad faith practice. Uh, DLC. Nobody likes Day 1 DLC, which is why the trailer to this video has 90% dislike ratio, or very close to 90% dislike ratio. And the worst thing about it is that CA, to this day, still continues this bad practice of Day 1 DLC, as we've just seen with the Yellow Turban Rebellion. However, we don't know what the actual contents are of that. However, when it comes to this one here, it's just not a very good DLC. If this DLC had come out a week after its release, I probably wouldn't have put it in the top 5 list. But anyway, that's that's the way it goes. Let's move on to number 4 now. The number 4 slot, in my opinion, has to go to Total War Rome 2's Desert Kingdom DLC. Now, on its own, this DLC is not that bad. It actually has fairly decent reviews. However, this DLC is only a Faction Unlocked DLC. This, came, this DLC came out five years after Rome 2, and there was, di there was mods that already unlocked these factions to be played. Now, what CA did during the release of this DLC, in my opinion, was extremely bad faith, and extremely bad business practice. And that's the primary reason why this DLC, which on its own would have been fine if it had come out two or three years earlier, is why it's in the, the top five list. It's because they removed mods that released these factions. And in overhaul mods that had these factions playable, you they were removed from the mods forcibly until you had paid for it. So it was a case of paying for something you already had access to after the fact, merely because they felt that they could. And that's why this DLC gets the number 4 slot for Worst Total War DLC. Now, I don't have a whole lot to say about the number 3 slot, but it is Total War Empire's Warpath campaign. What's to say about this one? It's really just not a very good DLC. It's pure and simple, just boring. Now, generally speaking, I like campaign packs for Total War games. I think that most campaign packs provide quite a bit of replayability to the games. However, this one here, I only ever played it once and I will never play it, play it again because it's boring as hell. The five playable factions are more or less the same with varying, di just slight differences. They're, you know, they're Native American tribes. You can't cross the sea with them. Their technologies are boring, and they are so much weaker than their European counterparts. Like I said, I've played this before, and it's just boring. It doesn't really have a whole lot of replayability to Empire Total War, and I would strongly recommend, if you were thinking about getting this DLC, if you love Empire Total War, to just give it a miss. If you really want to play a good... Native American experience, play the Americas campaign for Medieval 2, which is not the best one for Medieval 2, but it's still vastly better than this one. And that's why it's getting the number 3 slot. Anyway, let's move on now to the number 2 slot. The number 2 slot, in my opinion, has to go once again to Total War Rome 2 for its Beasts of War DLC. Now, the majority of the units in this DLC are completely pointless. Now, this is basically stripped content on a game that came out in really bad shape. So, it wasn't really well received at all. It's very poorly reviewed, and at the end of the day, the units that are in this, like Beehive Onagers as an example, are just not 
really very useful. I, I've never used them. I own this DLC and I barely ever use any of the units in this. The only unit I think that I ever use are the Syrian Armored Elephants. They're the only ones that are good. But as a DLC, this really shouldn't be as expensive as it is. It's just not very good. Anyway, let's move on to number one. Now the number one slot, which I'm sure many of you have anticipated. It's a DLC that is present on a number of games. It exists in Shogun 2, Rome 2, Attila, Warhammer 1, Warhammer 2, and Thrones of Britannia. And you can bet your fucking ass it's going to be in Total War Three Kingdoms. What am I talking about? Blood and Gore DLC. It's usually the first DLC that's, you know, not day one DLC that comes out for a Total War game. And it is 100% stripped content. Okay? This is the only franchise I know that is a war game that feels it necessary to strip a necessary part of war, which is to say the violence of it, and sell it separately in a video game. It's When it first came out with Shogun 2 and Rome 2, it was abhorred by its, uh, by its fan base. So why does Creative Assembly keep doing it? Well, we just got used to it, basically. In addition to it being bad faith DLC, the blood in the game is usually completely over the top, which is the only reason that can even justify it being purchased most of the time. Uh, just needed a little bit more time to talk about this one, the trailer's not very long. And, you know, if you think about it, Medieval 2 is the only Total War game that actually has uh, blood and gore in it, well, hard to say gore, got blood in it, that isn't a separate DLC. And the funny thing is, for that game, for Medieval 2, the blood is not over the top. A unit gets hit, it takes, it looks a little bit bloodied, and that's about all. But in all these other iterations of the blood pack, blood just spurts everywhere. I mean, it's good. It, it is good to see, you know, arms and limbs ripped off. But the fact that it had to be, you know, cut out of the game and sold separately is ridiculous. I mean, you could argue that, yeah, they put effort into it. They have to, they have to, uh, they have to sell it separately. I mean, you could argue that effort for anything. Oh yeah, you know they put uh, they put music in the, they put effort into the music in the game. They should just se they should just sell that separately. Oh, uh, credits. Just put the credits in separately. Just uh, charge a DLC for the credits. Um, oh, the title screens. Uh, just you know the, the the little names that come up and the quotes in the in the load screens. Oh, they put work into that. Just sell them separately. It's whatever the case is. When you sell a product, when you sell a game, it's supposed to be a finished product, right? And whilst, yes, they can get away with it, and we just do keep purchasing it, because what's a Total War game without a bit of violence? It's still bad faith DLC, and the mere fact that they're just going to keep doing it over and over and over again, regardless of how many people dislike it, regardless of how many people hate it, it's still just going to keep going. Which is why it's getting the number one slot for the fucking worst DLC practice in a Total War game. I want it to stop, I know a lot of people want it to stop, I would love to just see a game come out and just have blood in it. Now, a lot of people do say as well, and this is a myth that has been smashed a number of times. Oh, they just put in it in separately so that they can get the PG-16 rating or whatever. And this has been rebuked so many times it's not funny. That is just not the case. The reason why Blood and Gore is not in when the game first comes out is because they know they can make an easy buck from it. Because it sells well. That's it. It doesn't make it good. It doesn't make it good faith. It's bad faith DLC. And that, again, that's why it gets the number one slot. And if you disagree with that, then pff, you know what? I'd like to hear a really good argument that I haven't heard before because I'm really putting my foot down on this one as the worst one. Not necessarily specifically Total War Warhammer, but all of them in general. All of the blood packs are bad DLC. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I look forward to seeing what, what your suggestion for the next top five video is. And again, if you disagree with any of my choices, I really want to hear a good explanation. Please try to keep the insults to a minimum, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.